Now Allah says three things about the Qur'an. Allah is describing the role of the Qur'an, this is called hal, in three ways. Uh, and let's, let me just, instead of being very technical, simply describe what hal means. When you say, for example, a green car or a blue, you know, a, a blue wall or something, you're describing a color of an object. It's an adjective or a quality of something, right? Or a tall man. When you say something like a tall man, whether he's sleeping or standing or sitting, he's still tall, right? So that's not a quality that gets affected. A hal is not something that's a permanent quality that is dormant, meaning it's it's kind of embedded inside and it's there all the time. A hal is something that's living. For example, if I say a man walking, a man walking is not a permanent quality. It's actually something you can see. It's an action. It's something taking place. When something is described in grammar as a hal, it's not just a quality of something. It's a living, ex experienced thing. So what I'm getting at here is the three descriptions of the Qur'an here are hal. That doesn't just mean they're descriptions of the Qur'an that these are qualities that the Qur'an has, but these are experiences that come from the Qur'an. They can be experienced. They can be, you know, they can be seen. They can be seen in action, right? So what are these three things that Allah describes as hal of the Qur'an? He says, hudan linnas, that's the first one. Then he says, wa min al huda, that's the second one. Then he says, wal furqan, three things. And so over the next three days, we'll stop at each one. Hudan linnas, then bayinat min al huda, then al furqan. So let's talk today a little bit about hudan linnas. Simply translated, guidance for people. So what I, what would I mean by hal? It means the guidance of the Quran isn't just some quality that it has. It's something experienced. It's something alive. It's something in action. It's as if it's not. It's like a living book, and its role is to actually serve as guidance. Another technical language thing that the grammarians talk about that's very hard to understand if you're reading the tafsir, but I'll try to make it simple for you is that when you say there's a person that's going to give you directions one says one says to you i'll i'll take you there that person is your guide that person is your guide in arabic you would call them a hadi a guide but that person is not your guidance there's a difference between guide and guidance the the one who's guiding you is simply a guide but not guidance itself guidance is a much bigger concept the quran is our guide so the expected word is actually hadian as a guide, but he says as guidance. Now what, is, what difference does that make? When the infinitive is used, in simple English what that means is that you can't possibly get guidance anywhere else. This is it. This is the only guidance available. This is the ultimate guidance available. This guidance overshadows any other guidance. There may have been some guidance before in some other places, but it's like the Arab says, Aghna sabah anil misbah. Like when you have the morning, when the morning comes, there's no, there's no purpose for the lamp left. If you're lighting a candle at night, it has no purpose when the day comes, right? That's all the other forms of guidance become irrelevant because this is there. So this is the ultimate guidance. That's the first thing to note here. The second thing to note here is very important that Qur'an makes a distinction, a separation between knowledge and guidance. Somebody knowing a lot of things, if you have a lot of ilm, you have a lot of information, that doesn't necessarily mean you have a lot of guidance. It's the same as, you know, you have, you have the, uh, the app on your phone with all the directions, you have the maps on your phone, you have Waze, you have Google Maps, whatever you have. You have it there, but if you don't use it, and if actually you're not actually looking at it turn by turn by turn, then all that information is useless. It's sitting there, it's inside, but it's not being put to use. Somebody can have a lot of information inside them, they can learn a lot, but unless they're looking at that information, constantly thinking about it turn by turn by turn, it's not guidance. So a lot of times we confuse the increase in knowledge with the increase in Guidance, they're not the same thing. Increase in knowledge is helpful if we actually use it for guidance. And actually sometimes you have people that have a lot of knowledge and never use it. And you have some people that have very little knowledge but they always use it. They have a little, little, little bit of knowledge but whatever little they know, they put it to use to, to, to seek guidance and Allah guides them. Like I'm reminded of the story of the Ashabul Kahf in the Quran, Surah Al Kahf, right? The, the people of the cave. These people were not scholars. These people didn't even know about any prophet. These people didn't know about any book, no revelation, nothing. All, the only guidance, the only knowledge they have is there is a God and the only God that should be worshipped is one. That's all they know. And that's enough 
for them to, because they committed to that one thing, that was enough for their guidance against the most impossible opposition. So that's the first thing here when Allah says Qur'an is guidance, meaning a lot of times when we say I'm learning Qur'an, we, we emphasize the learning of the knowledge of the Qur'an, the grammar of the Qur'an, the, the, the tafsir of the Qur'an, the ilm of the Qur'an, the, you know, the tafsir studies of the Qur'an, the academics of the Qur'an. But in the, in the month of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa says, I sent this book as something that you will use at every turn in your life. And it'll come to life at every turn in your life. Like counsel. Like you know for some of you, whenever there's an important decision that has to be made, you call a friend. Hey, I just got this call, what should I do? Hey, I received this email, how should I respond? I have this offer, what should I Should I take this job or not take this job? You have someone in your life that you go to at every important turn. You text them right away. That's the kind of role Qur'an wants to play in your life, in my life. There's a choice that comes, I'm going to look in Allah's book, what would Allah want me to do? And that guidance will come to life. It'll actually come to life. That's actually the role of Allah's book, Hudan Linnas. Now the, the, the last portion of this, which is Linnas, four people. Allah is describing here, you know, some people, as they get closer to their religion, they think, well, if I come to the Qur'an, then things are going to get harder for me. Because Qur'an is going to want me to do things that are hard, that are, my feelings go this way, but Qur'an wants me to go that way, right? So it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to make things more difficult. Allah says in this ayah, this guidance that Allah has offered in the Qur'an is for your benefit. It's, the, it's for the benefit of all people. And that all people is so important because the devil comes to people and says, you know, Qur'an is good for that person, that person, this religious person over here, this guy has a long beard, it's good for him. But you know, I have a different problem, I, Qur'an can't guide me. It's for them. You know, I'm, I have a different situation. Allah says this is guidance for all people, Muslim, non-Muslim, religious, not religious, knowledgeable, not knowledgeable, practicing, not practicing. It doesn't matter. Allah sent this book to guide the hearts and the minds of anyone who wants to seek its guidance. And it will come to life for them. And it will be there for their benefit. The lam here is for benefit. In other words, whatever guidance Qur'an gives you, the guarantee is that is the better road for you. That's actually, no matter how painful it looks, no matter how excruciating it looks, no matter how much you tell yourself, this, I can't possibly do this. This may be something somebody else can do, I can't do it. Allah says every single human being can do what I'm asking them in this book. They're capable of it. They are cap if they were not capable of it, Allah would not make Qur'an for all of humanity. Allah would make Qur'an for some people. But Allah made Qur'an for all of humanity. All of them, at whatever level they are. However far they are from Allah, however close they are to Allah, Qur'an is still guidance for their benefit. So long as they are breathing, Allah has not given up on them, Qur'an is still a light for them. Some people might say, well, you read the Qur'an and you might get guidance. I don't think, I, I don't think Allah will give me. Allah just opened the invitation. Allah said, this is something that will be alive for you constantly. Now, this, this, this one short piece that I want to add to this, on linnas, on for people, for the benefit of people. You see, the way we give Guidance, the way we offer the message of the Qur'an, we have to think of one thing before we think of anything else. How is this going to benefit someone else? Allah, His priority is the benefit of people. Is the benefit of people. Which means your priority and my priority should constantly be what? The benefit of people. If the conversation is not going to be beneficial, then you shouldn't be having that conversation. The way in which Qur'an is presented, the way in which we share its message needs to be a way in which that people can see that you're saying this for my benefit. You know when you're yelling at someone? When you're insulting someone, you say, I'm doing this for your own good. Nobody thinks you're doing it for my good, bro. If you were doing this for my good, you wouldn't be talking so badly. You see? So when Allah says it's for the benefit of people, there's a mercy that entails in it. Here's the last thing. The month of Ramadan, the Muslims are very focused on themselves. Worship, fasting, iftar, taraweeh, you're constantly around. Some people take off from work. They say, I'm not going to go to the office. I'm not going to talk to my friends. I'm not going to do anything else. Did Allah say that this is, this is a month for the believers? This is guidance for the believers? Allah said about this month that this is guidance for who? All of humanity. You know that the devils are chained in this month, right? The shayateen are chained. When the shayateen are chained, are they chained only for the Muslims or for everybody? They're chained for everybody. They're, they're chained for everybody. Which means there's somebody who if you shared the message of Allah with them in this month, shayateen will not bother them. They'll actually listen. Their heart will be closer. This is an opportunity to share the message of the Qur'an in this month, in this month, 
the angelic presence, the divine presence, the special blessings are so powerful. If there was ever a time you would share something about the Qur'an with your non-Muslim friends, from the friends that have distanced or drifted away from religion, from those, with those people, if you were ever going to share something for their benefit from Allah's words, this would be the month to do it. This would be the time to do it. Because this is for all of humanity. This is Allah comparing us to the Israelites, Banu Israel, in the surah before. Because they believe the Torah and the guidance is for who? Just themselves, nobody else. You know, this, this is not for anybody else. And even within them, it's just for the rabbis, it's just for the scholars, it's not for everybody. And but the Quran came and said, no, it's for everybody. It's even for these ummiyin, these people that are not that have no education, none whatsoever. Don't be intimidated by the Quran. Seek Allah's guidance, and of course, there are going to be levels of learning, and that's what we'll talk about tomorrow when we talk about bayinat min al huda. Because the the question that I leave you with that you think you think about for tomorrow is people say, well, okay, fine, you want me to get guidance from the Quran, fine, but I don't know Arabic, I don't know anything about the background. What if I interpret it incorrectly? What if I read a translation and I get my own crazy thoughts and that's not what it actually means? What do you want me to do then? You know, and that's a very real, practical question. I mean, if, if you want me to just open up the Qur'an and start reading it, then how am I supposed to get clarity or guidance from it? That's the question that will be answered when Allah says, وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى That's the second role that the Qur'an plays. Once again, Qur'an plays three roles in this ayah. The first of them was the one we talked about today, هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ Tomorrow, inshaAllah ta'ala, وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى And the third day, if Allah permits, والفرقان بارك الله لي ولكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته